All right. So you have to understand where America came from, where the West came from, where all of the first world came from. We came from the six cradles of civilization run by the Egyptians, like Imhotep and the different pharaohs, by the different kings of Sumer and Babylon, and then of course all the different emperors in China, and then the other clergymen, council, priests, priestesses in the Eastern, Western civilizations. And they're all based upon deception. They were based upon religion. They were based upon snowing the ignorant people who didn't know any better, based upon keeping information from the masses and only letting out a little bit of information at a time to make you think that they're discovering things when they already knew it, and then you think it's something new and different, and then, of course, each generation reinvents the wheel. So when you are talking about the Illuminati or the Rosicrucians and then all the different titans of industry and all the different dynastic families, they were taught by those that deceived them around religion and politics and science. And so what do they do? They repeat the same thing as their parents, as their predecessors. And so then you really can't blame the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. You can't blame any of the dynastic families, the Bundys, the Collins, Okay, when you read Ritz, uh, Fritz Springmeier's Bloodlines of Illuminati, they weren't the first people on this earth. They were taught by people from antiquity. And they learned how to deceive people. They were the ones that created the religions, the Christianity, the Jehovah's Witness, the Mormons, the Judaism. Okay? And so when you're taught deception, and that's all you know is about deception, then that's how advanced civilizations derive from deception, procreation, hero worship, hormones, hormonal manipulation. And then you have all the different gurus that sell you a dream, sell you a story, sell you whatever it is that you think you want based upon the times. And so now I see, of course, the bigger picture in all of this because you have to know where the children came from. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the, the, all the different dynasties, they're just children of past corrupt politicians, religious figures, and scientific dogmatic people like Imhotep, like uh, Hammurabi, like any of the kings and queens and princes and you know that even in the, the Greek emperors or the Greek whatever, they were just as corrupt. You know about Caligula. You know how the Senate killed Julius Caesar, okay? And so you know corruption has been woven into all politics, all religion, all scientific dogmas. And it's never going to end, just so you know this. You can't stop corruption. You can protect yourself from corruption. You can protect yourself from exploitation. You can protect yourself from somebody else's nefarious influences if you know yourself and you have boundaries and you understand the bigger picture of the world that you live in. You're not living in a dream and wanting so much. But those that choose to be ignorant, those that choose to stay wanting and worshiping and all about the hormones, then they are ripe for corruption and they're ripe to be ripe to be victimized and exploited. You see, the whole JJ meta mentality is to set you free from exploitation. So you understand how the bigger picture works and you can protect yourself without completely destroying yourself. See, right now, the system and people who are corrupt are selling you protection that actually destroys you in the end. And that includes the holistic professionals as well as the allopathic people because look where people end up in hospice, the morgue, palliative care. And so it's in your face. It's not like they're hiding it, but people have this expectation, well, I'm not supposed to live forever. And so it doesn't matter what people sell you, you'll buy whatever is the easiest thing on the market until the body can't exist anymore from your lifestyle and your belief systems because you chose not to face the darkness. It was all about love and light, love and light, love and light until there's no more love and light anymore because you just tapped out the hormones. And so, and so, and so that's why you can't get mad at the Illuminati or known intellectually as the Rosicrucian order or known pejoratively as Illuminati, or known, what is that other 
uh, known, I don't know, cognitively, no, academically, the Freemasons. Remember, when you take the same people, the same meanings, and you apply different words, people think they're all different. So that is the corruption, that is the confusion of humans who don't understand words and derivation and what is behind every single word, religion, and politics. I had to go and research the etymology of words. I had to go and research, figure out what is the Illuminati? Who are the Rosicrucians? What are the Freemasons? And then what's up with this right-wing, left-wing Christianity, as well as atheism and liberal politics? And then realize there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of uh, divide and conquer, a lot of corruption that was taught by people of antiquity. And so right now we're in a great reset. The New World Order is tired of the corrupt politics. Yes, they taught you how to be corrupt, but they're also tired of what they've created and evolved into. And so since they gave you their religion, they gave you the science, they gave you all the political dogma, they're going to take that shit away or have you believe everything you want to believe and you'll destroy yourself while you're believing and resisting and being an activist and playing one side or the other. And so there's so many things, so many psychological operations that go on. And so when you can question your religion, your belief system, your scientific dogmas, your political thought process, when you can question that, that's when you're set free. When you stop worshiping Trump, Biden, Obama, Jesus Christ, Allah, Jehovah, I don't know, whatever the guy, Adam Smith and the Mormon side, when you can stop worshiping people and influencers and following all these financial gurus, you might actually set yourself free and develop your own line of thought and be innovative and figure out how to make the best choices for you and your children and your family without following somebody else and losing discernment. Because when you are worshiping a person, place, or thing, you lose discernment, you lose objectivity, and then you get caught up in the corruption of, of, of deception. And so, yeah, I had to let go someone that was a moderator in my, in my world. I was somewhat close to her. She came out when I was in Dr. Phil. And when I am spouting now my, my ch challenging the Christianity to religion, and saying what I say on my Facebook, some people who are that entrenched in their belief system and their religion can't handle another thought process, even on somebody else's Facebook, no matter what kind of history you have with them. Okay, so then you realize that friendships, especially the foundation of friendships in the JJ world was not about evolving. It was about another religion. It was about converting somebody into a religion or using Jesus to justify your religion. Or people thought they could make a shit ton of money off it. Worshiping money. And so watching my old moderators drop like flies, fall away, fall away, where I either get rid of them or they've taken themselves out because they couldn't handle my thought process and they overstep boundaries or I just, you know, had to, had to let go because there wasn't that beating of the minds. It confirmed me that religion has permeated everything. And so what do you do when you have everybody all religious and worshiping a person, place, or thing with complete intolerance to anything new or evolving? Well, you can't convert them or convince them that they're wrong. So you deploy high frequencies of virus and then... People already bought into the antibiotics and the medical system. So that's not hard to destroy those in the politics, religion, and scientific religion dogmas when they're buying into the cures, buying into the relief, buying into not facing the darkness, buying into whatever is sold, was sold to them in the politics, religion, and science world, especially in the medical holistic system. And so we have been set up to figure out at some point who the strong people are going to be and who the weak people are going to be and who's going to rise to the top and who's going to scramble and see and figure out if they can rise to the top or not end up to be the chef, the recycled ones that can't handle this new environment, the new economy, the new coexistence of religion.
And I don't even want to say coexistence is a religion because I don't even want to say the New World Order is a religion. No. It, it, I mean, you could say, I don't even say it's C-O-M-M-U-N-I-S-T. I want to say it's more like now we have to just clean the slate. And now it, what is it now? It's about tolerance because you can't change someone over there. It's about allowing different thought process to coexist. And it is also giving people the choice. You can live a cured lifestyle and not face the darkness and then die someday, or you face the darkness now and you don't have a lifespan. And then you know you can survive all the changes in the environment. And so what I have done that the Judeo-Christian world has done is they've used a marker of Christ before Christ or after death as the fulcrum of, of BCE before the common era and the after, you know, like antiquity versus modernity, where the jilly juice world is now about you either face the darkness and the darkness is the fulcrum or you try to cure yourself from the darkness and then you have a lifespan and the darkness is death. Because I faced the darkness this last couple of weeks and it changed me. Oh, it changed me. It changed me on such a level when I faced my childhood disease that that's where now all of these last couple of weeks have come from. Understanding Imhotep, Hammurabi, understanding the politics, religion, science, understanding that, that Hammurabi and Imhotep were not immortal. They were self-proclaimed deities that people worshiped and they never evolved from it. And then I realized that really all of the medical and holistic world scientific dogmas of health and wellness are only really 20 years old because that's how old Imhotep was when he discovered how to use antibiotics to enslave and keep control of population and also deify himself. And then Hammurabi figured out how to use that plus then the fear of bodily harm to keep a population under control. And he was brutal. And so are many religions are brutal psychologically and they're brutal physically. And so now the New World Order is one like, okay, we gotta stop with this brutality. Yes, there's gonna be segments of the population and you do some horrible things and it's happening now, you can't stop it because you can't control everyone. And it also happens in high levels of government. Doesn't mean that's who the government is, but there are some people in the government who have predilections that you can't control. And that's in both Democrat and Republican. So I don't want to hear all the Republicans say it's all a liberal thing. I don't want to hear all the liberals say it's, it's, a, it's a Republican thing. No, there are people who have hormonal imbalances in both the left and the right, in Congress, in the executive office, in the judicial system. And so now you know the, the slate needs to be clean, the petri dish needs to be clean, and we, have <clears throat> we were born from corruption. And now it's for a new world order, now it's time to evolve. And you have a chance to rewrite the future. Because if we didn't have the J-Juice and we would have so many people dying and not have any kind of hope that they could withstand all the changes and that people would deploy even more antibiotics and destroy themselves faster. Now we have a different opportunity. But that would also mean that you have to then question your politics, your religion, and your scientific dogmas. And if you can't do that, I don't know how you're going to face the darkness. When politics, religion, and science are all about love and light, running towards the light, death. All right. Bye. Ironic, huh? Bye.